Welcome back, you beauties. And yes, welcome back to 2024. I know we are all struggling to wrap our heads around it. We love all the new possibilities, but we haven't quite let go of Christmas just yet. Uh, in fact, I'm going to get a petition and see if we can hold on to the Christmas decorations <laughs> till next year. Um, but of course, we are firmly focused on looking forward. Many of us com contemplating our goals, some of those resolutions. Hopefully, you're still standing up to them for 2024. And joining us this morning to dial in is the very inspiring motivational speaker, coach and good friend of our show, Lucia Dramat, to shed some light on the importance of getting meaningful goals and practicing mindfulness as we embark on a new chapter. We've done this before, but we crucially need to do it every time we embrace a new season. Welcome back, my friend. How's it going? Good. Thanks for having me. Oh. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, new year. year, girl. <laughs> yeah. For how long do we have to say that, the Happy New Year? All year. Until when? All year. Because <laughs> it's going to be a year of newness. <laughs> Until we start paying school fees. Uh, oh, then boo. school opens, then boo. that's the reality. <laughs> <laughs> You're the perfect person to ask this because it's all about having a positive mindset. But what is the impact of setting goals and resolutions for yourself, especially given that we're at the start of a brand new year? Yeah. You know, I recently spoke to someone and they said they weren't excited for the new year. And I was like, why? I'm just not excited. I'm like, are you doing anything new? Are you doing anything different? Is there anything you're hoping to grow? And they said, no, you know, I'm just doing the same old thing. I said, that's why you're not excited. You need something new. You need to have something to aim for. You need something to grow into. When you have that, this is the year I'm buying the house. This is the year I am going to take my fitness or my health up. It gets you excited. Growth is normal. And if you don't give yourself the space or the room to grow, you feel stuck, stagnant, yeah. sluggish. Mm. So just for your own excitement for life, your own passion for moving forward, that is why you want goals. Not to please anyone else, just for you. And, we, and we've been blessed with the capacity to imagine literally anything. That's why we have it. That's where it starts. But it's not going to manifest if you're not seeing it. Definitely and yeah, not. Yeah. And I mean, speaking of goals right now, I know a lot of people often look to the year and say, okay, well, cool, I'm going to add some goals in. Let me look on Instagram, look on social media. <laughs> I want that. I want that house. <laughs> I want that car. <laughs> Is it more important to kind of just reach for the stars or align our goals with maybe something more personal like our own values? Absolutely. If the word should pops up in your head. I should be doing this. I should be. Then uh. it's probably not your own voice. Uh, you know, it comes from yeah. someone before you that said, you know what, you should do this, you should. So remove the shoulds. If it's a should, it's not personal. It's mm. not you. When you look at your own values, what is important to me, the relationships that I have, um, even just where I am financially, um, do I feel free? Do I feel like I can do the things I want to do? When you start to look at those things, you start to align with that. I'm not a big resolution person. Yeah. Yeah. But I am an adjustment person, so I try to make adjustments to things I already do well. So if I'm already drinking my glass of water in the morning, now I'm taking my vitamin with my glass of water. Ah, okay. If I'm already oh. going to the gym, maybe I'm just going to push it now with a 20-minute walk. I'm going to just add things Fine to things I'm already levels. doing well so that it's not something brand new. Mm. And if you actually think about resolutions, the word resolute means unwavering and yeah. determined. And we so casually like, this is my resolution. Yeah. We're not even resolute about it. Um, so forget the resolutions and Rather focus on adjusting what you oh, already yeah. do. Yeah. Be adaptable. I, I, funnily enough, I discovered it with the journey that this man started me on with the intermittent fasting. Don't give yourselves reasons to fail. Give yourself reasons to succeed. Mm, so yes. don't say, okay, well, my day doesn't fit in with the timing of my thing. I can't not break my fast at eight, so I'm just going to give it up. Move it. Move it out. Adjust. Make those little adjustments. So much of what you've been saying here, and we talk about values, and it's always generally like the paint over at the end of our work process or... It should be the, the start. Mm. That's where the why comes from. I can guarantee you, no one who's tapped into their purpose is sitting here thinking, what am I going to do this year? They are like, what can I do to get this yes. done? You need to know what you stand for, though. And we use the word values quite loosely. How do we tap into what values are positive mm. and can inspire us to act? Those things about ourselves that other people love that we often don't necessarily see or identify ourselves. Mm. I think... 
I just want to touch on this very quickly. Sometimes people's values and their beliefs don't align. Mm. So they, they value a beautiful marriage, but they also believe they won't find the right person. They value being wealthy and successful, but they also don't believe it will ever happen for them. So you really do want to make sure you've actually done that internal work to make sure your yeah. beliefs align with your values. Because we look at society and we see all the bling, and then we value those things but we don't believe it for ourselves. So line up your beliefs with your values. And what are your values? It's the things that you think are um, valuable, are worthy, are worth striving for, are worth working for. And those are the things that are important to you and uh, possibly your partner too. You'd want that as well. <laughs> and a good way to think about that, when you're exhausted, when you've got nothing left, yet you get up and you do it again, mm. you keep doing it, kids, do it for a lot of us, but I know you're a little bit uh, <laughs> behind in that cycle. But that's a good way of understanding what you're willing to actually, and that's your value. Yes. Your kids are what you value most in the world. I absolutely love that. Mm. Now, Lucia, when it comes to being mindful, I feel like that's a word that's being thrown around quite a lot, and you don't want to lose the value of it because yes. it is such a powerful word. How can people be mindful of the new year, the new energy that goes with it and really see it last? Because a lot of us, we hit the gym 1st of January or, you know, the, the new year starting and then come February, it slows down, March, it tapers down and then April, we're like, what? I, was, I, I signed up for a gym membership. <laughs> it, we, we lose momentum. Yes, we do. Absolutely. I think mindfulness, the practice itself, really helps us to stick to what our goals are and what we want to do. So, for example, gratitude. Gratitude helps you shift perspective. Oh, it helps you be more resilient. It helps you appreciate what is in your life and help you build that contentment, which is not the opposite of ambition. You can still be content and ambitious at the same time. And then journaling. It helps you have clarity. Mm. It helps you figure out what your next step is and also think through situations. So sometimes if you journal, you can see what is the thing that distracts me? What is the thing that discourages me? I want to go to gym and then this happens and then I don't. So now I can identify my trigger and I can start to prepare for it. So mindfulness actually just helps you to really look at your life, look at yourself, and then go for your life, knowing what to prepare for, what you appreciate, why you do what you do, and why you should stop doing those things. It's a little handbook. Yes. I'm just going to get my little handbook card. No, I'm not accepting that this year. <laughs> Sorry, uh, move on. No, I love that. Yeah. Listen, for me, this conversation is so pertinent right now. Obviously, it's the beginning of the year. We all have this good energy, but we also want to capitalize on it. And I think we have great intentions, like you mentioned, but I think getting practical about it is something that we should all be practicing now. And I think this next conversation will be something you're going to look forward to, Mzanzi, because that's exactly what we should be diving into. How do we implement all this? Yes. How do we actually action all this intention and take this energy and send it into the year with success? So I'm dying to hear more about that conversation. We'll have this uh, happening in just a bit, Mzanzi. So I guess don't go anywhere for now because this beautiful convo is going to continue in just a bit. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your feel-good breakfast show, Espresso on S3. It's a brand new year, and it's also the perfect time to reflect on our aspirations and the paths we want to forge in 2024. Now, joining us today are three remarkable individualists. We have specialist wellness counsellor, Christy Ann Irene, motivational speaker, Lucia Dramat, alongside Lex Leo, otherwise known as Dr. Smile, <laughs> a cosmetic dentist, recording artist, and entrepreneur. And together, they'll guide us through the process of setting meaningful resolutions and achieving lasting goals. To our great panel, welcome. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Nice <laughs> you all look so 2024. Uh, look thank at you. you. So fresh and vibrant and ready to slay. I love it. This is a wonderful time of the year, but it's also kind of a get real time of the year. And you guys all kind of work in the get real space. When people come to you, they generally come with a lot. Yeah. They either need you to help them find that thing, plug into their resolution. They need you to turn around their life because of something that's affecting them so deeply. Yeah. You all have chosen to play in that space. Yeah which means your own purpose, your own kind of target has to be dialed in. So, Christiane, I'm going to start with you. What do you want for yourself in 2024? I love this. Nobody ever asks the counsellor about I'm sorry, about girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, thank you. Well, my New Year's resolution is actually a little bit of an interesting one. 
fine as to entertain even the smallest, silliest ideas I might have. Oh, wow, okay. This comes in form of maybe doing a Google search, just researching it a little bit. It might be something so silly I'll never return to it. It might be my next big break, you never know. Exactly. Mm. So how could I ever know unless I try? I love so it. So that's my New Year's resolution, to entertain even the smallest, silliest ideas I might have. And then three months from now, we find you in Nepal, <laughs> riding Best some no. yak into a new brave future. And that's exactly. awesome. Uh, Lex, what, what are you wanting for this year, man? I think in summary, to become kinder, to uh, become more compassionate, to become more thoughtful. These things are always at the back of my mind because I know that they're the solutions for a lot of problems. Mm. Yeah. In whatever avenue you may work or live or play, um, if we become those types of people, which is what the best version of ourselves, Selfish, really, yeah. if we do that consciously, uh, everyone moves forward a lot faster. And I think that is the holistic goal. Mm. Yeah, that's where we're at as a species. I kind of think we've, yeah. we've entered that gateway. Yeah. Lucia, for you? Um, definitely health. I always want to improve my health in some other way. And then family time. I've got three kids, so I want to make sure that we create special memories as a family. I love that. Lex, I wanted to ask you, how are you setting your intentions in a way where it's, it's meaningful and not just fleeting, fleeting thoughts for the year ahead? I think that everything of this world is quite fleeting and everything of the spiritual world is a lot more long-standing and takes root and has impact. So I think um, I'm constantly just trying to align my goals, my mission, my purpose with spiritual qualities, not material qualities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, timeless. We can align things with income, with time, with professional progress, we can't choose for those to be our goals, or we can choose the foundation of those goals. And the foundation of those goals is how can I then become more generous in business? How can I become more service orientated in my work? How can I become more just in society? How can yeah. I become more compassionate in family? So we have foundations for all of the material things. So I'm, I'm constantly trying to do that because we get carried away with this world, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it carried easy, away yeah. and it teaches us to do one thing. You keep having to remind yourself, um, do it the other way because it's a lot more beneficial. Yeah, and I think the world is inverted. I've felt that certainly in the purpose-driven yeah. space. And inverted I love the fact now that a doctor away. isn't just a doctor. They're running a podcast to teach other doctors about an approach that they had. They're yeah, sharing yeah, yeah. data. This is what we need. We need to plug in. Maybe a good way, the best way to start looking forward is to look back. Yeah. 2023 taught me some massive lessons. <laughs> Gee whiz, it was kind of like, okay, get back up again. Okay, well, let's see, get back up again. It's, everyone has had something. What did you learn from 2023 that you want to oh, carry into your practice? To it right there in there. That's exactly it. Us as South Africans, oh my goodness, have we faced some ordeals. Yeah. And we keep facing those ordeals. And we keep facing those ordeals. <laughs> and we are so resilient. We are an amazing, amazing nation. And something that I think has been a lesson to me year after year, comes to me from the population, comes to me from my own life, is to be scared and do it anyway. Yeah. Mm. You are never going to be perfectly prepared. Mm. You are never going to feel 100% there. So be scared do it, yeah. and do it anyway. I like that. Be scared and do it yeah. anyway. That's like a little tagline for 2024. <laughs> 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 Lucia, you mentioned that you want to spend more time with your family, be more intentional with, with your, you know, the dynamics within your household. As a motivational speaker and an inspiration to so many others, where do you draw your inspiration from? I definitely believe in mindfulness. I'm also a faith girl, so I lean on my faith a lot. But it's also about just living in the moment. I think so often we live in the future, the past. We think about yesterday. We think about what's happening at work when we're at home. When we're at work, we think about what's happening at home. Mm -hmm. So just actually living in the present, you actually find that there's just so much to enjoy. Mm -hmm. There's so much to, even when you're with your kids, a little smile, a funny moment is just amazing. And sometimes we overlook it because we're so busy and so preoccupied. So for me, just drawing on what is actually around me right now, this 
these flowers, this moment, this is special. And so enjoying everything this moment has to offer helps me to feel fantastic. Mm. This is the crazy thing. I mean, I discovered that my kids can stretch time. <laughs> I, a second with my kids feels like an entire day because of what I get out of it. And if you think about it, nothing really exists outside of the moment. Mm. Yet we are so quick to go to the future or to judge ourselves in the past, but we don't think about what we can do actually right now. We can be adaptable, we can own it. Maybe, Lex, this, this goes to you, buddy, because I think a lot of people say, oh, it's easy for you to be positive now because you're smashing it. You look at the way you're dressed, you're doing everything you can perform, you've got an amazing practice. But you were this person before the success came. This is the nature of who you are. How do you stay accountable and true to that? Um, your, I think your mindset and your understanding and belief in your potential has to be there first. I'm very, I'm very grateful that our parents instilled into us an understanding that we have this unlimited potential to do what we want if we prioritize the betterment of humanity. If we prioritize service to humanity, you can do whatever you want. Anything, yeah. Um, so because that was instilled from childhood, um, you have this understanding that if I want it and it's good for the world, not just good for me, I can easily get it. Yeah. Uh, if it becomes a selfish ego motivation that this is just good for me, can happen, cannot happen, cannot have positive effects, it really depends. So uh, I guess it's where you uh, place your priorities and the foundation that is set, which is why I try so hard in these classes that I have with children and youth to get that understood. Yeah. Mm. That thing understood from childhood means you can do what you want. It's a superpower. Yeah, yeah it's a superpower. it really is. It yeah. is a superpower. Yeah, exactly. Love that. Definitely is. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, thank guys. you for sharing your wisdom and being part of this conversation. And for you, stay with us. We will continue this conversation in just a little bit. It's my feel good Welcome back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked. Let's continue what has been the most enriching conversation to kick off a brand new year. And we have the privilege of delving into the transformative insights of motivational speaker Lucia Dramat, who has, um, she's done a lot with her young life already. And she has now added to that by authoring the empowering book, 21 Days in Full Bloom. I love everything about that. And she is going to join us right now once again to share some of the wisdom encapsulated in what sounds like the most amazing book, offering a roadmap practically to kickstart the new year with intention and purpose. It's the P word that I love. I think I drive people insane because I'm always purpose. What's your purpose? Purpose, we must know. <laughs> but we do need to know these things. So first of all, congrats on Thank the you. book. Yay. Thank you very it's much. It's amazing. Can you show us the yes. book? 21 yes. Days in Full Bloom. In a nutshell, how would you sum up that book? It's a 21 day journey that helps you learn beneficial thinking. Okay. Not just positive thinking, but beneficial thinking. Ooh. So it's going to teach you mindfulness. It's going to teach you how to be grateful. Uh, some people think grateful is good manners, just saying thank you. And that's two very different things. It's an so action it teaches of you gratitude. gratitude but yes. yeah. And it teaches you how to visualize. Some people, they don't know how to visualize. And I've worked with so many people and they're like, when I sit there, I don't know what to think. I feel stupid. Mm. I don't know what to do. So it helps you to actually visualize the future, how to craft your own affirmations that are authentic to you and unique to your life and your dreams. Mm. And so it will take you on this journey for 21 days. And after that, it should set you up and you should be able to use this beyond, far beyond 21 yeah. days because you've used, you got the tools to take you forward. Yeah, Love and we've got, we've got this amazing supercomputer here that we've <laughs> no operational manual. Like, please, just show me how to use Help it. Help us, yeah. guide us. Is that the, was that the sort of inspiration behind this? I mean, you, one that has a lot of experience, you see people going through these challenges, they need to kind of get over the hump and execute. Is this the reason why you decided to actually create this sort of a Kickstarter, or is there a bigger reason behind this? You know, during COVID, things were so crazy, and I thought, I need something positive to focus on. So I started writing this book to 
every day have something to focus on that would encourage other people that would, if you're going through something crazy, if you're going through this, this moment where you need to restart, something to just help you. So I did this on COVID and it's been amazing. So many people have tried it, have, have gone on this journey mm. and it has been good for them. And so I'm like, okay, I did a good thing. I did a good thing. Can you share this and, with all the world? Yeah. Yeah. And I've heard of so many people that have gone through a difficult circumstance or situation and they've written a book or they started a podcast mm. or they started a business. So sometimes in the heart of difficulty, you start something amazing that will actually help other people. You discover your purpose. <laughs> Flo, oh, I'm going to keep saying it, man. I see what you did there. I love it. Can we get practical for a moment here and maybe engage with the process of the book? Um, seeing as we don't have to pay you by the hour, <laughs> and we, we don't have to, to buy the book just yet. Um, maybe take us through how you would approach a practical exercise like this. Okay, so for the 21 days, you're going to do the same exercise. The idea is to build the habit, and okay. that's why it's 21 days Brilliant. long. Each day, there's a different topic as a focus point. So, for example, one day it would be, I am valuable. Why do you value yourself? Why are you important? What about you is important to you? Not to other people, yeah. to you. And then it's going to take you through the steps of gratitude mm. and visualizing your future, uh, building your affirmations, and then also identifying your negative thoughts. Because uh -huh. as long as something is concealed, it torments you and you don't know why. So you have this negative thought telling you, you're not good enough, you're not good enough, don't go, don't apply, don't try, no one chooses you, why go for it? So you're gonna write those thoughts down so that you can see it. And once you see it, you can say, okay, is this true? And if it's not true, why do I keep thinking it? I'm not going to allow it anymore. So when the thought does come up, you say, I've written this down. You're not welcome here. Yeah. You know, I'm going <laughs> to shut you down and I'm going to put my affirmation in instead of that. Mm. So this journey takes you through that every single day. And after this, people become so aware of their negative thoughts. They're like, you know, I thought that. That's not okay. I'm not okay with that thought. Yeah. And that is a good place to be. It's a gatekeeper because I think often we get caught up a traumatic moment is so traumatic or something happens to mm. us that it's almost impossible to say that you can ever move on from it. And then you stay there mm -hmm. because that's what you're telling yourself. Yes. You need to reframe it or see it in a different light. Definitely. Oh, awesome. Now, Lucia, I see you have some cards over there. We're going to get do. practical. I do, I do. <laughs> These are the Good Life Q cards. And um, you, you can take one if you want. I would love to take oh, one. Can you pass so me put one down? Yes, I've put little prompts in here. Um, prompts, reminders, questions, and you can call it affirmation cards or just reminders of how you want to set your day. <laughs> you can go for yeah. one as I well. love this. <laughs> Mine Let's says... See. Challenges, risks, and failures do not reflect that I am a failure. They are opportunities for me to learn and grow. That's beautiful. Nice. I absolutely love this. So here's the crazy thing. This is a good one for me to have because people assume, because I talk so much, <laughs> that I am super this. Okay. But I'm actually not. It's something that I've had to learn to do in the moment. I am oozing with confidence. Ooh, I like I it. Like I like it. it. <laughs> nice. I feel like you definitely did have some sort of an aura around when you gave this stuff, because this is very pertinent stuff. I choose to live fully. I'm not limited by, by, by the achievements, lifestyle, and opinions of others. I love that. Speaking to doing life for you. Yes. Stimulating yourself, filling up your own cup. This is my mantra for this yeah, year. I'm I know. This with you, putting it in the fucking. I love these. Look, okay. would it be overconfident for me to just plaster this thing so people can see it? If they aren't picking up the message already, I am. In That's what's up. With confidence. So just take it easy. Why is it so important for us to dress it down like this? We often want to get the full book, go through the nine months journey, do this whole big crazy thing. Sometimes all you need is one sentence. Yes. Why are these mantras so important to us? You know, I had a friend and she had this on her desk and she had quite an intense job. And she picked one card out and it said, I choose to operate out of a place of peace. And she says, in that moment, it just hit her in the heart. And mm. everyone that came into her office saw the card because she had put it right on the top. And it just shifted the game. Because wow. it was just this moment, like, I don't have to try and save the world. I'm just going to choose to operate out of peace while I do this work. I'm mm -hmm. just going to choose to operate out of peace when I go into this meeting. I'm just going to choose to operate out of peace. Sometimes you need to make something so small that you say to yourself, I can do this. Yeah, yeah. You just know? one step. You, you just it. have to make it so small that I can, just operating out of peace, that's all I'm going to do right now. And then you do that. 
And then you go to your next thing. You know what? I'm going to go into this interview and I'm going to ooze confidence. I'm going to abandon <laughs> Every whatever day else now. and I'm just going to ooze confidence. <laughs> Sometimes you just need that one thing to hold on to. And this card set is essentially offering people that one thing to just hold on to. I love it. You're our one thing. We, I mean, we're going to hold on to you for the whole year, girl. Where can we get our hands on this? I feel like yeah. these are the perfect gifts to give individuals oh. as birthdays come along and, you know, we're in the new year. Where can we get our hands on the 21-day book as well as these cards? The book is available in quite a few different bookstores. So you good, can go good check book it out stores. or request it. Otherwise, luciadrama.com. Everything's available there. I love it. That's a nice value yourself Valentine's Day oh, gift. I love that. Hey, I like it. I'll take 10 <laughs> more cents. Valentine's Day now. It's just January. We've still done Christmas. I'm year. sorry. I shouldn't have brought out the V-Day. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, absolutely amazing. I picked up some gems already. Cannot wait to go through the 21 days of solidifying that. Some valuable insights on navigating the journey as crazy as it is of goal setting and embracing mindfulness. We speak about it so much, we have to do it for ourselves. And that way we can approach this year looking for fulfillment and balance in our life. It's gonna be crazy, but it's gonna be a well-balanced craziness, I think, for 2024. Why? Because I'm oozing with confidence. <laughs> I'm gonna crush it.